Let's bring in porn star Cagney Lynn Carter. Here she comes. There she is. Ooh. Watch your step. Th there you go. Hi, honey. How are you? You know, Charlie, will you do me a favor? Hi. Sure. When guests come in, can you figure out some sort of music of, like, that, that would be appropriate for them? And that... They'll just sort of give me a little ambiance while they're getting yeah. in your situation. Like walking that. music, yes. what? right? That's right. Not a standard yes, like one. Like WWE. No, no, no. Not Everybody. A standard. Well, it changes for okay. everyone. Like for her, I'm not quite sure what it would be, but yeah. Oh, okay. All right, sure. This would work. Yeah, that's a perfect. 1932. That's perfect. Hi, uh, Thank you. Cagney. Look on your feet there. Hey, no problem. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cagney is uh, going to be at Diamonds Men's Club tonight. Uh, at uh, 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. and same time tomorrow night as well, right? That's right. Is this how uh, girls? Uh, tell me about the state of the uh, porn industry right now. How are, how are girls making their most money? Is this dancing? Is it uh, is it actually filming scenes? Is it doing private webcam shows? Because that's kind of big now. Yeah. What's the main money maker for girls these days? I think that the way that um, we're kind of adapting and evolving is um, basically everything. If you have your hand in a little bit of every all of those things that you said, which a lot, you know, that's how you make the most money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to answer that question. The, because it's different than years ago like yeah. 10 or 15 years ago girls would just make all their money filming scenes but but it, it seems to me like the all of these free porno sites have sort of decimated the amount of money that you can make from that right are people paying as much money these days for filming scenes um the thing is is that in the 90s you could walk from porn and it's like you'd be a millionaire yeah. you know it's just not like that anymore it was really glamorous and you know they were still shooting on like 35 millimeter and just things like that and vhs and now it's all internet so you know there's a monopoly on the industry right now so um but I, as far as like making good money we still i i mean i feel like i make pretty good money right so. i would i've liked to do it in the 90s yeah <laughs> sure. Who wouldn't have? Uh, they're making a bunch of money back then. You, you, where did you grow up, Cagney? I grew up in St. Joseph, Missouri. St. Joseph, Missouri. Now, I don't know anything about St. Joseph, Missouri, but it sounds like a teeny tiny little town. It is. It's very teeny tiny. All right. So you, you grow up there. Is this a conservative uh, city? Is everyone uptight and religious and that kind of stuff? No, no, no. It's an hour north of Kansas City. So okay. Kansas City's kind of cool. It's not so, you know, Kansas City's like chill. Right. And so you uh, grow up there. How in the world did you end up in this industry that you're in now? Um, I moved to California when I was 18. I drove across the country in my mom's Ford Thunderbird by myself. And Let me guess. You wanted to be an actress. Be an actress. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so that makes sense. You go all the way out to California and you have dreams of making it on the big screen. Yeah. But before I went, I, I needed money because you have to have money to go out to California. Of course. So, um, I graduated high school and I I started dancing, and um, and you know what the money was just so good when I was out there I wasn't really paying attention to, I I wasn't ready I couldn't handle like Did the auditioning and the and the criticism and all that stuff I was like so young and like I was not ready for that so. Did you start dancing class. in Missouri or? or yeah, when I you started got dancing in Missouri. Yeah. What are these strip and clubs like out there in that tiny town? Is that where you started? I can only imagine that. There's probably not a lot of talent out there at the clubs, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I always thought it was a really cool thing. No, I'm saying like, but the girls were the were there a bunch of good looking girls there? Or I Everything th that I know, I was I learned from strippers that I watched. So yeah, so you you go they, out to they Cal were good enough for me to be like. Wow, I want to do that. Well, what about, so this is a small town that you start in. What about, like, uh, people you went to high school with? Did they know that you were then uh, stripping at the, the local strip club? Well, I moved, to, I lived an hour north of Kansas City. And then that summer, my mom, she's a property manager, so I lived down in Westport in the city. So oh, okay. I danced in the city. And then All right, that makes more sense. And to California after I saved, I like, $5,000. Like, Kansas City, okay, so they probably have some good strip clubs there. I thought you were stripping in the little town, wherever, St. Joseph yeah, no, or whatever. Yeah, no. Yeah, if I uh, would have been stripping there, everyone would have known. Yeah, everyone okay. would have known. So did anyone from, uh, but it's still not far away from where you went to school. Did yeah. anyone from high school or anything ever show up at the strip club and not know that you were there? And they go, whoa, no, there's no, but, Cagney's vagina. What the hell? They, I didn't, I don't think I did it long enough. Like I was like in and out. Like I was like to California by the time I was like 18 and a half. Yeah. You know, like, it was yeah. like, boom, 
gone. So you got some money. You saved up some money. You move out to California. Yeah. You you wanted to be an actress. Mm-hmm. You, you're stripping out there in California to make ends meet. Yeah, I was stri- Well, I the thing is, I don't think it was because to make ends meet. Whenever I started dancing, I loved it so much. Like, I kind of lost sight of, like, the whole acting thing. So I was like, so, like, the stage at the club was my stage you know See, what i mean that is, became my stage and like i fell in love with pole dancing and this is interesting to me because i would think that that many of the girls who are strippers probably hate being strippers I, i'm i would think maybe i'm completely wrong about that i mean i would say that the reason why it didn't feel like work to me was because i really enjoyed like the dancing part of it but <laughs> but you have to deal with the creepy guys <laughs> Yeah, I that's guess, that's a bad part, I right? I guess I got such a euphoria <laughs> on stage. I didn't really. I guess I, you know, kind of tuned that part out. Yeah. So <laughs> Plus, I mean, it's not like porn. It's not like you have to sleep with them. Yeah. So. Right. So then you, uh, uh, you you start doing some nude modeling. I'm assuming. I'm guessing. Um. No, actually, I. Whenever I got in, there was I couldn't even. It wasn't like that. Like I tried to like talked to my agent I was like I would like to do magazines first and he was like it doesn't work like that anymore it's like, <laughs> and when he said that I got it because I was like okay I can either like suffer through this or I can just kind of go for it which mm-hmm. is like you know I wanted to well, be how do you if even, I was going to do it I was like wanted to do it how know? do you even go about so you did you seek out you said all right I want to try doing some some uh porno work I was dancing and this girl walked in and she had on this mink coat and she was really flawless makeup flawless hair and she was like, I want to get a dance with you. And I was like, you want to get a dance with me? Okay, are you sure? Like, this never happened. She was like the same age or a little bit older. I had, naive, I had no idea, like, anything. And I was dancing for her, and she was like, you know what I do, right? And I was like, no. <laughs> she was like, I'm a porn star. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And um, And so we went out a few times, and that's whenever I kind of, like, through her, I saw that, you could do you could make money more than one just one way Mm -hmm. and that i think that's what initially kind of sparked my interest what was this point so what was this girl who was important doing in the strip club was she just recruiting girls no she was like just hanging out with a guy friend of hers and you know sometimes we go to i go to the strip club sometimes too you even i i I can't imagine that you would do that because you work in strip clubs you work in porn i would figure you go forget this the last place i wanted to be when i'm off work is at a strip club it's not like that's not like i go all the time but like every now and then yeah like you know Mm -hmm. it's you know once in a blue moon but yeah she wasn't i don't think she was it wasn't a recruiting type of thing like she was just like literally having a drink with a guy friend let's go to the strip club so she tells you you go out with her a few times she 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 sort of opens up your eyes to this yeah yeah and that's how i kind of like you know so you talk to that guy she probably hooks you up with some go call this guy or whatever no but i knew who i i knew her long enough to find out the details of the industry a little bit and what was kind of going on and then that's whenever i got on the internet and i just kind of pursued it and like kind of saw what was going on in the industry like and realized that it wasn't like movies anymore and that you had to have a, like a, a booking agent and mm-hmm. they would get you work and and so i found what i thought was the best one and he still is and um and i was like went to his office had the meeting he told me this is how it works these days and i i was like i got it right away mm-hmm. and in my first scene and, and then how after soon that, after that after you meet him do you do your first scene like it was like that for me. It was either a yes or no. And once uh-huh. I said yes, I was like in. So Okay, like so that's a, week w- later. So a week later, they they hook you up on your first scene. Yeah. And it, it was just nerve-wracking? Or? No, it wasn't. It was I was ready. It was, I, you know. Really? For me, there was no, like, I'm my family knows. Like, I told my mom, you know, I, I, I'm open and honest. What did your mother say when you said, I'm going to do porno? You told her in advance? I told her, I didn't say that I was going to do porno, um, but... I, you know, I told her that I was going to be working for an adult triple X company or multiple, you know, triple X companies. Yeah. Is that something that I kind of wanted to, you know, get and into? She, she probably kind of figured it out on her own then, I'm guessing. Right. Yeah. And what'd she say to you? Um, I mean, she supports me. She said, okay. She's, she, I didn't, I wouldn't say that she said, okay, but she gave me encouraging words, yeah. you know, 
Everything yeah. was like encouraging. And what positive. about your father? Did, did you grow up with him at all, or no. is he in the picture? Okay, no, no, so no. he's completely out of the picture. Yeah. When was the last time you talked to him, or have you ever talked to him? No, he passed away last year. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Did you did you did you know him at all though? I, I knew him a little bit. He he was incarcerated for the, like most of my life. So. That's like my father. Yeah. I, I didn't know my father at all. And then he passed away in prison. Yes, he did. Yes. Is yeah, it, yeah. mine did too last year. We were on the show, and and uh, they said, you know, uh, after I get out of radio. I want to make documentary films, and, and and one of the guys on the show said, "You know what a, a great documentary would be is track your father down and go meet him for the first time." Yeah, I did that. I well, I went and right before my dad died, I went and saw him like a year before, mm-hmm. and it was kind of like I didn't know that he was going to die the next, you know, the next year. But I that was kind of like closure for me. So, so, so they go, "Why don't you go find out?" And we look him up. He's in prison. And then it, it says, uh, d- uh, I'm looking on the thing, and it says deceased, and it gave the thing. So I found out actually on the air that he had died Oh, in no. Yeah. Why did you go see him in prison? So he was in prison, I'm guessing. Yeah. Why Why did you go see him? I guess I just, I needed some type of closure, you know? I needed, I did needed you ha- closure. Did you, did you? Uh, it had been 17 years, and I don't know. I just kind of, like, wanted to let him see me and then like that was my way of like finally being able to cl- kind of close that chapter well did he live did you live with him when you were a, a very little girl at all or i mean did you have memories of him did you um i had a few memories of him yeah but he was always in prison when I, my memories are always what was he in prison for three count three strikes in texas he he wasn't wasn't in prison for anything serious so it was armed robbery um i think he was in a high speed chase and then um like some other Petty, minor petty thing. theft yeah yeah those three strikes things if you if you get if you have two strikes you get that third one it doesn't matter what it is you can steal right. a loaf of bread you're going to the, the prison for the rest of your life or 20 years or whatever yeah. it is so uh, uh what did he do did he leave your mother when you were uh, young or he was um he had a, like some issues with the drugs and yeah and probably some mental issues when when i when i saw him he i could tell he had to, uh, like some minor he was, he was a little off in in a special way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slow? You mean you, your father was slow? I don't think he was slow. He was just a very interesting man. Yeah. He, he wasn't slow by any means. Have you met Je- like Have you met Jeffrey out there yet? Have you met multiple- Have you met Jeffrey, yes. our guy out there? Yes. Was yes. he Was he at all like Jeffrey? Because Jeffrey's the, the the craziest. He's not slow, but he's weird, man. In a he's- more sinister way. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you, your dad yes. was like evil, Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> she actually loved Jeffrey. She loved Jeffrey. He was wearing his new boots. She oh, with the bullets. Yeah, the bullets. Yeah, I got a picture of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah it's, those it's are great. It's the way that he shows them to you. Oh, yeah, he's so yeah. proud. Rose yes. was like, "Oh my God, that's adorable." He loves those boots. <laughs> yeah, we we got those for him. We sent him out for a fashion makeover. He picked those out himself. I uh, know. And he also, it's the the um, bullet thing comes separately. Oh yeah, he bought yeah, he that. Put yes, that on. yes, he, he changed them yes, out. Yes, really he did. funny. Now that's funny. Like when you that's go really to funny. when you go to prison and you you talk to your father. Yeah. Do you have to like talk through glass, or are you in a room? Or um, I actually got to got to like sit across the picnic table from him. My aunt was with me. I have family in Texas. Okay, you know, um, so I got to sit across, you know, and talk to him. And it wasn't like super personal. Like I, I just like I kind of tried to get as much as I could out of him from like our family history. But my dad was adopted, so. And I was really just trying to figure out like who his mom was, mm-hmm. like his real mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just kind of like in a roundabout way, just kind of bringing myself a little bit of closure on the issue. And then, and then, uh, when he, when you found out that he passed away in prison, yeah, what did you think? Um, I was actually devastated because I was coming back from Australia at the time and they were calling me to, um, you know, he was on life support and they wanted to like get the go ahead but you have to be there physically. To pull the plug. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. to, to pull the plug. And um, and I was in Australia, so I was trying to make it back to the United States. Yeah. And he died before I got back. And you were devastated, even though you weren't close to him. You were still... Yeah, I don't know. It's just like, because I feel like he was misunderstood, and no matter what, I know that there's parts of me that aren't my mom, and I know that it's him, because the way that she looks at me sometimes and some of the things that she says, she's like, you know, and so for me, I guess that kind of like, I guess I just wanted to see him, you know? Yeah. 
and I, and it, but like it, like I said, it, it brought me some closure on the issue. Cagney Lynn Carter is here with us. Uh, she will be at Diamond uh, Diamonds Men's Club tonight at uh, 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Same times tomorrow night, 10 p.m. and uh, 1 a.m. I'll give you a number to call. I think and it's all fully the... nude there, too. Fully nude? Good. I think it is. I hope so. No, it's not. The guy's shaking his head. Oh, no. oh it's topless, topless. Yeah, topless. Well, you can go fully nude yeah, if you yeah. want. Yeah, <laughs> no one's going to stop you. You're yeah, right. Um, so uh, I think we, we do have, uh, I think Jeffrey's going to do, we have something uh, planned here. I'll, t- I'll tell you all about it here in, in uh, just a moment. But we have uh, some guys coming in, and we're going we're gonna to do something, uh, just a very, very quick contest for Roverfest tickets. And Cagney will be a part of that Yay. Uh, in, in uh, just a moment. Um, you, said, you mentioned... Um, you said that your father had a drug problem, but I read here that you uh, just got out of rehab a few months ago. I did. That's true. What were you in rehab for? What, give me this. Give me the lowdown on this. Um, I I wasn't in rehab. I actually like removed myself from L.A. for a while, and my parent, my family lives in Maslin, uh-huh. so um, I came home for a while and kind of like put myself through like a self rehabilitation. Self rehab. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, just kind what of were like, you doing? What was what was what was going on? What the, it was it was all drug. That's what your self rehab was. was yeah, to get it was off just, of drugs. Yeah, just to kind of like you know maybe got a little bit too too like with the candy there. <laughs> what kind of stuff were you? What, what were you doing? What kind of drugs? Anything were you doing? and everything. Really? Yeah, anything and everything. I just kind of like went down. So when you got home, yeah, did you did you? Stop doing drugs completely. Yeah, you I did. did. Yeah, I stopped doing drugs completely. Because you've now removed yourself from probably people that were an influence in your life and people well, that were I doing it around you. Well, I stayed home for seventy-two days, a little over seventy. I like, I did, I gave, I stayed home as long as I it would take to complete a rehab. Yeah. Full program. So you stayed at home. You. Yeah. Um, you you. I uh, worked in my parents' tanning salon for free. They paid me in produce. Okay. <laughs> And, 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 and you didn't, I mean, this is interesting though, because you didn't have, I mean, when you go into a rehab facility, they're probably giving you counseling and they're doing whatever they have to do, but you didn't need any of that. You were able I pro- well, I wouldn't say that I don't, I don't need it. I just didn't, I had no money and no insurance. So that wasn't an option for me. And, and so I had to do what I had to do to kind of, if I wanted to get better. But did you have any cravings though during that period of, of course. time? Of course. You did. Of course I did. How'd you stop yourself from? I was at my mom's house, like yeah. in the middle of BFE. There was, <laughs> I don't know, you know, I wasn't that desperate. If I was that desperate, I would have just stayed in Vegas. And, you know, I could have made, that's the thing. I could have made the decision to go down Las Vegas Boulevard and like lose myself even more. But I didn't. I threw my stuff in storage and came home. Yeah. Um. And, and, and uh, it's been successful. You've been is yeah. it clean for how long now? Um. I don't know anymore, but five, six months or something, seven months. No, it's like over that. It's getting like into the, like the nine month area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and but when you went back to, are you live in Los Angeles or Las Vegas? I or, or I both? live in both. I well, I, I'm actually in the process of buying a house here. Oh, okay, all right. Because my family lives not here in Cleveland, but in Maslin. Okay. Um, so I live in both places. And and uh, when you went back to LA, yeah, you, you want to make some money. You want to do porn or whatever you, you want to do how did you stay away from these same people that were <clears throat> getting you into trouble before um i never was really with anyone that was the the reason why i went home like i was alone <laughs> okay so it wasn't like i was partying <laughs> so you were doing drugs just by yourself basically yeah i just well kind of you know and sometimes there would be a few different friends like here and there but nobody that was important enough to like is more of an acquaintance type of thing. So why do you think? Uh, uh, why do you think you obviously got to a point where you said to yourself, "I got to take care of this." I got problem. to a point to where um, I wasn't interested in making money anymore or doing anything like that was productive. And when I got to that point, I knew that um, that was not okay. Do you think you were doing this? Why do you think you started doing this? Were you trying to cover some sort of pain? Were you trying yeah, to? Yeah, I don't know. I guess so. Um, I like. I had some things that happened last year. Like I got. I got hurt on a set. They had me do a stunt, and I went through some glass. Some like, um, what is it? Sugar glass. I did like. I jumped through it. Yeah, like the breakaway stunt, glass stuff. Yeah. And I came up, and I had like split my face open. Um, 
And so I think that was kind of traumatic for me. And then after that, my dad died, of course. What then, kind of porno are they doing where they're doing stunts? You know, I mean, I would have said, yeah. we, we, they would said, wait a second, I'm about ready to take a 10-inch, you, you know. I, 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 don't need, <laughs> I, I don't need to jump through a friggin' piece of glass here. For the yeah. intro, yeah. Yeah, right. That's the thing. It's like there's a lot of directors that really, like, you know, kind of like my situation, you know, they really wanted to be a real director. <laughs> you know? Right, so right. This guy thinks like, he's making a Transformers movie, yeah, not a yeah. porno so, like, or it's something. Like, yeah. You gotta focus on what we're doing, though. You know, so right. No one, no one wants to see me jump through glass. They want to see me get railed. Right. Right. Just like you know, nobody wants to see me, you know, be like a, a an award winning actress. You know, like Dude, they want to see you get railed. See me get the best boobs, not like that's right. Academy Award. <laughs> you have a boyfriend or anything? No, I don't. I don't date. I'm. I was with someone for a very long time. And, we kind of split last year. Oh, so that same, also same. probably had something to do with the whole th- thing, right? No, 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 that that happened afterwards. I mean, we're still we we were together for a really long time, so it's like we're still talk very How often. long? What uh, how long? Like ever since before I even got into the industry. So like six years. Six years. Like and and uh, that was all I ever knew. So at this point I don't know how to go about that whole thing. Why'd you break up with the guy? Or did he break up with you? Well, technically it's like when you're the, with someone that long, it's almost like marriage. So it's not necessarily like a breakup. It's not even really official yet. It's so it's just very complicated. You still get you, so you still see this guy sometimes. Yeah, well, of course, you yeah. know. You, well, um, do you still put out to him though? Yeah. See, you need to cut it off. This is this, you're dragging this on too long. I I, well, I don't I, know you, but I can tell you. I I can tell. I can see the pain in your face. Oh, it's very painful. Yeah. You, you know, you want to make it work, like. Nah, I, it's not I, gonna work. I can t- trust me. If it was gonna work, it would have worked a long time ago, right, Dieter? Yeah. That's right? true. That's true. But that doesn't mean that you know we can't. I can't like still talk to him or be friends with him. I don't see him on a regular basis. We don't live together, and so. People always say, "Here's here's my thing. I've like, never been married." You know, if you were to fuck your ex-wife or something. If you were gonna, well, what, uh, sorry, no, that's all right. If you were to bang your ex-wife, yeah. sure, people do that. Dumb did yeah. that. Dumb, my phone screener it's in like, there was going through a divorce. He had a brand new girlfriend. Exes what does don't he count. do? He goes Ex- and he bangs his. Uh, exes don't count. Yeah. Exes don't count. Tell that to Dumb's girlfriend. I was gonna say yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have to say though, she said that because I had a couple mistakes, and she said that the second one really, she can kind of understand. I'm not happy about the first one with the ex. with the ex wife, right? She can understand it though. Yeah, yeah the see, second girl, she's the not. second Understand- girl that you just cheated on your girlfriend with. She she doesn't like that. No, yeah, no, he, no. He just told his girlfriend like two or three weeks ago that oh, I've cheated on you uh, twice. Well, why he opened up to her about that? Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know, but here's here's the thing: it, it, this relationship that she say you want to work, you want it to work, and blah blah blah. Relationships shouldn't shouldn't be that much work. It, 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 you know what I mean? They should make you. Uh, uh, better that you make your life easier, not more difficult. Well, that's who's nece- doesn't necessarily mean that it hasn't. You know, yeah. it's like you have to. It's just all what it means to you. But at the same time, you're right. And so I'm like, I'm still working that out. But as far as dating goes, I don't know. I don't. I've never known anything other than my guy, like yeah. my ex guy. So I don't know how to go about that. And it's just like it's really difficult because I'm not. Again, I'm not someone that like is okay with lying. So. Once you immediately say, like, I sleep with other people for a living, that's kind of a deal breaker 90% of the time with most guys. And even if it's not, like, it's almost like a deal breaker for me. So I just, like, I don't know. I dated a porn star for a, a, a year. I was fine with it. I was Really? It, yeah, yeah. That's it. Back in the, uh, I was going to say the 90s. See, I need to meet someone like 2000. you. I have to meet someone like you, you know? When, I didn't... when that happens, then... Yeah, I, I didn't mind but, it. Now, if she started going out on, you know, dates with dudes or whatever, I might have a problem with that, but uh, I didn't... This girl was great. Dudes, you were oh, fine my with God, it. this girl was great, because she'd go out, she, she'd want to, like, go out and pick up girls and have threesomes and, like, stuff like that. I mean, well... Who's uh, going to say no to that? No one's going to say no to that, of course. Yeah, that's right? hot. Yeah, of right. course. Yeah. You had a... You had, yeah, I read you uh, had a, a big orgy once, uh, unless you just made it up. I read this in my prep that you had some sort of orgy, not not like a movie, but oh, I was totally. I was such a. I was like so promiscuous in high school. I'm so different now. That's why I'm saying like I'm. You were slutty I'm in high school. Super shy now. Like I could never go up to. A, I was desperate. Like I was super, de- but not desperate. I just like was so curious about sex. Like you know what I mean. I was like, yeah. I was fearless. Now I'm just like. Super afraid of rejection. I don't really, I don't want to waste my time with a one night stand. I want some, I wake up next to somebody that, ugh, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know, like that, all those things. I'm just like, 
I don't, I'll just, where's my rabbit? You know what I mean? Where's my wee vibe? Like, I'm, yeah. I don't need it. Like, I'm so this many, is like, interesting. So you were now. slutty in high school. And then, then you get into porn, and, and now you've become a prude, basically. <laughs> I'm so prude. <laughs> I mean, I this have is sex something for else. a living. I have sex for a living. It's yeah. exhausting. How often are you, <laughs> how often are you doing scenes, though? I mean, are you doing all of them a lot? or? Um, uh, I do, like, a lot of anal now, but because my rate is high, like, I can do, like, four anal scenes a month and like not have to work for the rest of the month you know is it, is it pleasurable at all for you when you're doing these anal scenes i mean be honest with me um okay like the first like 10 it was like it's it, no matter what with anal this is what i always tell girls it's always gonna feel like oh my god i have to take a boot. i have to go i have to go i have to go <laughs> like it always feels like that but yeah. then like in the middle of it and sometimes you're just like wow i'm coming too like it's like have you seen like, have you seen this thing Dieter? this this yeah. this new <laughs> trend that they have this rose budding i just saw this oh that's yeah you know what i'm rose talking budding. about oh this it's is an, called like prolapsing right yes yes yeah. basically it's their rectum coming out of their uh anus out of the sphincter what do you pink mean like sock. the pink sock they the get pink sock. yeah yeah they're wizards but but it looks like a it's the size of a it's not just hanging. No, it's, it's, like it's the size of a yeah. Coming out. It's like yeah. A, it looks oh. like a tomato. It's the size of a it's of, of softball almost. And then like some other chick will will like uh, be playing around with it and doing. I, I mean, you you, you Dude. Gotta, this is becoming uh, very popular. I guess. I know and, Mike Adriano tried to convince me. Like whenever he was showing it to me, and I was like, he was like looking at me like. It was the new big thing, and like I was like looking at him, like no. Uh -uh, he was, he sorry, was, in honey. other words, he was like, you, you should give this a shot. Yeah, yeah. To, like he was yeah. like, you know, like I love it, blah blah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Dude, listen, let me tell you something. Porno is getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> that it's getting more and more extreme. It's it's there's so much porn. We were talking about this the other day. When I was a kid, to find a porno, like a magazine or a, a, a DVD or whatever. Cinemax. This was like finding a, a buried treasure. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Now, these kids, you just click, oh, okay, seen that, click, next one, next, next one, next one. Oh, oh yeah. Gangbanks saw it. Orgies got it. Bukaki got it. Oh, uh, uh, wizard sleeve. Ooh, that's crazy. Yeah. What's that? Oh, uh, <laughs> chick's doing a horse. Okay. I mean. Yeah, that's that's whenever I knew. I was like, I'm jaded. This is. Yeah, it's getting it's getting so wild. so naughty. And... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like... It's wilder and wilder, right? I mean, it's just, uh, do you think that it, there will, be, I, I don't know what the end yeah, game what's is. Next? What's next? next uh, uh, who knows uh, i don't know for me i'm good with like what i've done i feel like um i don't you know i don't see myself really you know, maybe who knows actually who knows like i've always been doing it for the money so yeah. <laughs> i'm very open and honest about that so <laughs> uh cagney lynn carter is here with us she's gonna be at diamonds men's club tonight 10 p.m 1 a.m and uh tomorrow night 10 p.m and 1 a.m as well uh, for info, call 216-621-1840. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. We have a few guys here that uh, are, are um, I guess we've uh, devised, some, we, knew, we knew that Cagney was coming in. We've devised some sort of game to get Roverfest tickets. I think Jeffrey's going to be involved. Cagney's going to be involved. Great. I don't even know the whole rundown of what we do. I, 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 all I know is that it's a bunch of dudes with man boobs. I know that. Uh, so... Uh, we'll bring them in, and we'll do something uh, right after this. We'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang on. Rover's Morning Glory.